Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a variant of an old pattern called the picket pin. I'm going to mix and match a little bit with materials, but it's going to be essentially the same fly as the original. Um, we're going to tie this fly on a size 12 streamer hook, a must add 9672. And for the tail and the beard, we're going to use some orange fibers from one of the feathers from this pheasant skin. And I'm going to reuse or reuse again more of that Jameson's um, oyster colored yarn. And I'm going to rib that with some pearl, medium pearl tinsel. And the wing on this fly is going to be made with a uh, tuft of gray squirrel hair. And one of the key features of a picket pin is having a hurl head. So we're going to use some peacock curl and uh, reinforce it and use it for the head. And we're going to hold the, everything together with the uh, black uni thread. So we'll start the thread on the hook, uh, leave a little space behind the eye. In this case, a little more space than maybe usual, maybe about a quarter of the hook, just to kind of mark our place where we're going to stop and uh, leave room for the hurl head. So I'll go back to about the hook point. And then uh, in this case, I think I want a layer of thread underneath my tail fibers. So I'll go on back to where the uh, where the thread lines up with the barb. And there's a tuft of those orangish uh, fibers from one of the feathers on that pheasant skin. So now we'll get that started on top of the hook, work our way forward to keep a smooth body and trim off the excess. And we're going to add in that pearl mylar tinsel. And here I kind of tug it a little too hard to get it on the far side and pull it loose. So we'll try that again. And length, thread tension, and torque carry it to the far side. I want to come underneath the hook with the first wrap. And I'll take my thread wraps back just a little further than I did the first time to kind of bundle the tail fibers. And here we have about a three inch long piece of that Jameson's oyster colored yarn. I'll start it, wrap back to where the tail stood, starts, and then work my way forward and trim off the excess. So I'll come in with the whip finish tool and throw my half hitches or little whip finishes in with it because uh, working between the camera and the hook, I was uh, reaching in to do hand whip finishes or hand half hitches and bumping the camera. So we'll put our uh, thread across the uh, bobbin cradle and get started wrapping the yarn, kind of making sure that we don't leave any of the black thread show there at the back. When everything's magnified, that becomes very obvious and... It's a good place to point fingers. Sloppy. So we'll drop the thread over the top to hold the yarn in place. Do a couple of cross wraps. A couple more wraps across the uh, yarn to hold it. One in front and trim off the excess. And then another half hitch or whip finish just to keep the uh, yarn from coming loose. Still using the rotary feature here. We're going to wrap that mylar with the uh, rotary feature and we don't want anything to slip off the front. Now there I'm fighting with one of the fibers from that spin drift yarn. It kind of went back and got caught on the tips of the tail, but we'll clean that up in a second. Four or five wraps. I want kind of a mixture of that that tan color from the yarn and the uh, the pearly. When I fish this fly, I'm, I'm trying to imitate a small bait, for it, bait fish or a little minnow. And uh, I think a, a lot of times with the dark head, it could look like a black nose dace. Uh, so we'll fold the uh, mylar back, put a couple of wraps on it to make sure it doesn't pull loose. And have one more fight with that stray fiber. Now 
All right, so we have another tuft of the uh, orangish fibers from uh, the other side of that pheasant fiber or pheasant feather I had. And we're going to flip the vise upside down and wrap that in at the bottom. Make the beard. I made the beard and the tail a little bit longer on this. I want it to be a streamer. This, These are streamer hooks, but I don't know. They could have been 1x longer for me, I think, in a perfect world. But we use what we have sometimes. And that's what's kind of cool about this. All this stuff that you're seeing. I've had, I've done this in videos before. I've made other flies with these same materials. So, um, although I have one of everything, I think, after 50 some years of tying flies, I don't want to have to run to the store every time I want to make some new patterns. So, I try and reuse or mix and match. But there we got a bundle of those squirrel tail fibers. Um, knocked the fluff out of the bottom, put them in the stacker, and Gave them a couple of bumps till the, the tips are even. And put in a couple of tight wraps here. And kind of jostle them around, make sure they're on top. And they kind of wrap down around the sides just a little bit, but not too far. And then put a couple of wraps in front just to hold things. And I'm just trimming a little bit of the fibers off at a time here. I don't want to get too wild and knock these out of place. Those uh, squirrel tail fibers are very hard fibers and, and hard to hold in place. So I'm going to um, drop in a little super glue here, let it soak in a little bit, and uh, then wrap it all with the thread. And the thread wraps will help to set the glue, and hopefully the glue gets in between some of those fibers, and it, it does help hold them in. I think one key to not having your wing pull out is to not use too many of those squirrel tail fibers. Too big a bundle and you'll never get them wrapped tight. So there, I think I've left enough room for a hurl head. I keep trying to put, in this case, some super glue in the eye of the hook just to make things uh, difficult on the stream if I didn't catch it and get it out of there. So we'll take two... Uh, Peacock curls, I'm going to make a loop, and I'm just trying to make a thread tag here so that I can use that strand of uh, tying thread to reinforce those peacock curls. And this is another good place for a, a two-turn whip finish. I was going to yank those hurls out of there and change my mind and thought the scissors would do a better job. And while we're at it, we'll cut one of the legs of the thread. Could have left the loop and twisted it double, but one strand should be enough to hold that. And here we'll bundle everything up. So the two peacock fi hurl fibers and the uh, single strand of thread. Now there, what I'm... What I'm kind of showing is we want to give that thread a little tug, see where we are, give that thread a little tug so that it's a little shorter than the peacock curls. And that way when we're twisting, the thread's tight and the peacock, peacock curls don't get the extra tension. And they, they, we're trying to prevent them from breaking. If the peacock curls were tighter and would wrap, a lot of times they break. The thread kind of keeps that from happening if it's a little shorter than the peacock, if any of that made sense. And we'll put a couple of uh, couple of wraps of that chenille, that peacock chenille that we just made. Toward the eye and uh, a couple of cross wraps. And pull everything out of the way and put a nice little head there and uh, leave the thread toward the back so when I do my whip finish I can come toward the eye of the hook. And do a five or six turn whip finish. And all in all I kind of like how this came out. And we'll slice off the excess thread. I think that body will kind of peek through and it'll look like the, the beige underbelly of a, a minnow. The, the mottled or striped look of the squirrel tail gives this thing a, an effect in the dark head. 
um, does imitate some of the minnows. I have a couple of samples of this fly where I've put in a little feather on each side to look like um, uh, the fins uh, you know, of a minnow or something. And uh, I've tried this with feathers for a tail instead of the long fibers. And uh, I think it all, all in all, I think they're all good patterns. I don't know that one's any more effective than the other. This one's just pretty straightforward and easy to tie. So put on some head cement. Sally Hansen's hard as nails here. Uh, put a little more in the hole in the eye, in the eye of the hook. Make sure that's clean, and and there we go. So if you like the fish streamers or wet flies, give this one a try. And thanks for uh, watching. And if you hung in there and you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. Until next time, be safe.